There was no sound in that video, right? Correct. You have no idea how many shots were fired before he hit the ground, correct? No, but I know how many shots struck him. And I know which of the shots could have possibly struck him after he was on the ground. Because they would have a different pattern. They would not be on certain parts of his body because his body was down. Right. But again, you can't give us any kind of sequence, right? I, I can't give you any sequence excepting what I've already given you. That is testimony from a uh, former county pathologist, now a forensic pathologist uh, for trial work and other things, uh, who is testifying today in the Jason Van Dyke trial. And Mike Monaco is in studio with us, and Eric Rung is with us, and Eric Rung was in the courtroom today. And let's just talk about that testimony first. She was on the stand, and it's it's interesting. It's, it's stuff that we haven't necessarily heard before. No, she was on the stand for three hours uh, today, too. Shaku Tease is her name. Uh, and basically what she was saying is that, in her opinion, Laquan McDonald was standing for most of the shots that hit him. She believes that it was either the first or second shot that Laquan took into the chest that likely killed him, and he would have been dead within one to five minutes, is what she said. And she said the other wounds uh, were superficial, is how she described them, and that she could only for certain say that Laquan McDonald uh, was hit twice while he was on the ground. Now, the prosecution came back very quickly, and it, it was very contentious uh, between the doctor and uh, the prosecution in this case. They, basically, she went through every single one of those shots and said, shot number one, did that cause an injury to Laquan McDonald? The doctor said yes. How about shot number two? Yes. All the way through, all 16 of them, and also got her to basically say she didn't know if uh, which shot actually killed her because she couldn't tell the order of the bullet. So if it was the first or second shot, there's there's really nothing that is in the reports that would suggest that she would know that. There was an, an important point, too, is that she said that in order for the those initial bullets to hit him, that... Laquan McDonald's shoulders had to be turned toward the officer, toward yeah, the gun. Yeah, that was another contentious point in the uh, testimony, too, today, because she said that in order, just like you said, her, her, his shoulders, his torso, is how she said it, had to be facing Jason Van Dyke when he took that shot. Um, and then that got into a, 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 quite a bit of an argument between the uh, prosecution and uh, the defense witness there, too. Basically, it, it was a definition of what straight on is. And she, the doctor said she could not tell definitively if Laquan McDonald had squared his shoulders to face Laquan. All she would say is that his torso was turned. Mm-hmm. How impacting is that, Mike Monica? Well, it's, it's important because uh, it's a question of whether the officer was at risk or was anyone else at risk. And so they're, they're making a big deal out about this because uh, Van Dyke's partner, Walsh, said that he felt that that he and uh, Van Dyke were at risk. Even right. he actually, he said even after Laquan fell to the ground that there was ri- a risk. So, what do you think that when he says that this pathologist says that one or two of the shots struck him, only one or two of them struck him when he was on the ground? The video, when you watch it, doesn't seem to show that to most people, and I, I don't, I don't it, know how I mean, you jive does, those two things. Yeah, it contradicts what we've all seen on the video. Um, but she stuck to her guns in uh, when the state was pressing her hard, or special prosecutors were pressing her hard. Uh, and she also said that the Cook County Medical Examiner that did the initial autopsy uh, didn't do a thorough job. She complained about there not being enough photographs and not uh, dissecting the bullet tracks. And she said, so again, the information that she was kind of talking about being missing is also some of the information she used to come up with her opinions. Mm-hmm. At least that, that's the way it this seemed was not in the courtroom. A second uh, this was not a second autopsy. No, there's only one. No, autopsy. There's only one autopsy, and so she has to go with whatever data is available to both sides here, which is the county data. Right. right. S- similarly, the prosecution's witness th- was not the person who, who performed the autopsy. But it's but it's just the the record of the autopsy that they're working on. It's one record. Right. There's not a second autopsy in a case like we saw. One, there's one record, and when the, and, I mean to be fair to the, the coroner who did it at the time he did he did it, nobody was thinking it was going to be a murder. 
They were thinking this is a fellow who passed. You know, was it was a police shooting. A police shooting. Yeah. All right. Uh, who else was on the stand today? So then the defense called uh, three witnesses, all had to do with uh, their jobs at the Cook County Juvenile System, uh, whether they be in the Cook County Juvenile Courthouse or whether they be in the Juvenile Detention Center. And basically what they were testifying to was that they had interactions with Laquan McDonald when he was 15 and 16 years old. Um, some were physical altercations uh, with Laquan. Um, but the prosecution came back and said, um, well, did did you ever talk to Jason Van Dyke about this? And, of course, the answer is no. Uh, did you uh, ever tell Jason Van Dyke what Laquan McDonald did when he was 16 years old? And the answer was no. And, of course, what they were trying to prove is that Jason Van Dyke would have no idea who who was walking down that street that day. And, Mike, you told me before that all those this kind of stuff is irrelevant, but it's just it designed it, irrelevant in terms of there's a law, Illinois law, that allows it in. And so that's why it's in, because the, they can put it in. The history of the person? Yes. The judge also admonished... Uh, but without the Jason Van Dyke knowing the history yeah, of the person. Right. Without, without any requirement that the, that the prosecution or the defense prove that the defendant had knowledge, that is to say, Van, Officer Van Dyke had knowledge as to the prior history of the victim. Mm-hmm. Here is what a little of that sounded like. Uh, we give him standard directives, basically, which is to remain you know, on your bed. Um, attempted to get him to calm down, and um, I began removing the mechanical restraints uh, from him. Okay, so you began removing the handcuffs once he was, after he was placed on the bed? Correct. Okay. So he's face down. Were you able to remove both handcuffs? So I removed the first handcuff. Um, upon removing the second handcuff, he pushed up off his bed uh, and said, I'm going to f*** y'all up. Yeah. So uh, he was a troubled young man. We know this. But but he's not on trial. No. No. Well, that's, you know, that's the truth. He's not on trial. But in terms of defending the case, the defense lawyers want to put him on trial to show that for whatever reason that he was walking down the street that day with a knife in his hand, he was not intending to do good things. What is a lawyer hoping to say to a jury? What are they hoping the jury takes away from testimony like that? They're hoping the jury takes away from this that this was a person who was had nothing but bad intentions in his mind. And that's what the officers face every day on the street. And that uh, in a situation like this, police act right away, immediately, and they often, you know, have to have to decide whether or not to use their deadly force, deadly force or not. Yeah. And that's what they chose to do here. Do you think Van Dyke will take the stand? Will the defense put him up there so people on the jury can hear what was going through his mind, what, why he did what he did? That's a very good question. It's uh, the toughest question in cases like this. There are two questions. One, bench or jury. Here they decide a jury. Second question, does the defendant testify or not? And it's a, always a difficult decision because if you put the defendant on the stand, then then it's it sort of minimizes all the other evidence because the jury is going to decide, do they believe the defendant or not? If you don't put on the defendant on the stand, then normally the, ju- your, the defense lawyers tell the jury, look at all the evidence in this case. Look at all the prosecution's evidence. That is not s- significant enough to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that there was an intention to murder. I stand by, everybody. We're going to talk to John Cass, who's outside the courtroom today, talking to protesters about what that looks like from outside the courtroom. But first, Judy, what's coming up at the top of the hour? The flu making a comeback. Time to get that vaccination. All right, that's some of the protest out in front of the courtroom at 26 of California today. Jason Van Dyke on trial for murder in the shooting of Laquan McDonald. Jason Van Dyke, of course, a Chicago police officer. John Cass of the Chicago Tribune was out in front talking to protesters today. Uh, we also have Mike Monaco and Eric Rung in the studio with us as we're covering this for both WGN Radio and CLTV. And John... Uh, it's interesting. There have been a lot of discussion over the last couple of weeks about the protests and what would happen if Jason Van Dyke is found not guilty of first-degree murder. And I think one of the questions that is asked here that, that, that comes up is, you know, will the city go up for grabs? You're talking to protesters. What are they saying about the potential for that? I don't know. They're kind of playing the game, you know, 
give us a conviction or maybe that'll happen but i don't think the protesters are the you know like bishop westside or brother westside playing rb music in his microphone while he's shouting is not going to be one of those who lead it you know there was a protest street protest a few months ago a barber was shot on the on the south side and that became uh by police and it turned out that the barber row was armed and he was reaching for a weapon when he was shot and, that, and still people threw rocks and bottles at, at cops so who can say you know who can really say is it a threat is it is it part of the deal the larger political deal that dike goes down uh and no unrest now with rom out i don't know now that rom's gone or pulled up pulled the plug i don't know if maybe the balloon you know popped a little bit i don't really know did you see those kinds of signs because it seemed like during some of the protests earlier they were asking Rah- the Rahm Emanuel to resign and things like that are those signs still around there are they asking many politicians to leave office or some of them are running for office now <laughs> You know, uh, Jamal Green is running for mayor. That's right. I thought, the to me, the most interesting thing was when I, wa- I went into the courtroom, I listened to some of the testimony, but walking up, there was a lawyer in a black Lexus. It was new, like never washed in a machine wash, always by hand. And he's in a beautiful suit, kind of like the kind Monaco wears to court. Oh, uh, beautiful <laughs> and he, suits. And he was a big Rolex, and he's smoking a cigar. You know, smoke is coming out of the sunroof, and he waves to me me and it made quite a picture and i said hey you better call saul and he goes damn right you better call saul and he was irish and i thought this is cook county court right here this is it you did paint quite a picture of of, of what it feels and looks like around 26th street there's no question about that it's a it is a uh, it's a festival always of of interesting types but in in terms of what you're seeing outside the the courtroom, mm-hmm. uh, and you know outside the court building itself, it, it's I, I my I'm getting a sense that the protests aren't quite as as robust. I think that's the term people like to use now Good, as yeah. as they uh, as as the originally thought they were going to be. I'm not sure there is a ton of energy here. Uh, because, as you point out, I think because Rahm Emanuel is no longer mayor, Gary McCarthy is not the police chief, and uh, Anita Alvarez is not the state's attorney, who were the three people that everybody was like, hey, what's going on here right. Right. at what this time? Uh, then the, in, and we'll just have to see what happens here. And I think even in, in uh, there are people who are demanding that justice be uh, a conviction here, right. but I think it might be a conviction of anything. I don't know that well, it'll be a conviction why- of murder one. Bro, that's why you charge a guy 16 times with uh, aggravated battery, you know? Right. Because you, you're gonna get, they're going to get him on something. Are they going to get him on first-degree murder? Um, no, I don't know, you know? Right. There will it be something else. Will he, will he serve some time? I think, you know, just gut feeling. I'm not a lawyer, but gut feeling politically, that seems to be where it's going. All right. John Cass, thank you, sir. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, guys. Beautifully, uh, Thanks, beautifully uh, built uh, <laughs> really picture of words picture. right there. <laughs> and that was not, by the way, that is not Mike, Mike, not Mike Monaco because he doesn't smoke cigars. Isn't no. that correct? That's right. Thank but, you. It would mess up his beautiful suits. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, but you do. You have had a Lexus, though. So that's true. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure if that's if that is you or that's not you. All right. All right. All right we got it. All right, Michael. Thank you very much, Mike, Mike Monaco, Mike attorney at law. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. And, Thanks, of course, Eric, thank you. And you'll be in the courtroom again tomorrow? Yep, I'll be there. All right, we'll talk to you again tomorrow Sounds as well. Good. Talk to both of you tomorrow. Coming up, the stories that matter with Judy Palak from the Northwestern Medicine Newsroom on 720 WGN Radio.